wisdom set up a bipartisan committee to go into these matters. As we speak, that issue is dead. I've cited a draft report many months ago. Parliament is unable to state its position, which by insurance is the position of the people they, 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 they represent, on a matter as crucial as the misuse of the police service for electoral purposes. Parliament, as of now, has not been able to state its clear position on the subversion for political purposes of the Inspector General of Police. The Inspector General of Police does not have public support and public defense. Under these circumstances, what do you expect the police service to be? If we, members of the public, fail to insist on the independence of the police service mm -hmm. and the need for the actors to be fair to all and so on, and we leave them to their faith, this is what we should be expecting. I'm completely disgusted by the fact that this matter has been allowed to die. Nobody is raising any question about it. If you were IGP Dampari, what would you do? Bottom line, it's a human being like all of us. Bottom line, why? If he didn't need his job, he would have resigned a long time ago. He needs the job. That's why he's still sitting there. And if he's threatened, and we do not rise to his defense, what do you expect him to do? This is, that alone is an indication that something is going wrong. That alone is, is an individual affair. You don't register people on the basis of their party affiliation. The exercise is not about parties. It's about Ghanaian individuals who have attained a certain age and are qualified according to the constitution to vote. So as soon as mass mobilization sets in, there's a huge problem. That's most important. Okay. Now, many things have happened. Many, many things have happened. Many incidents and have been reported. One is what happened at Wilensee. And that goes for the for the for the for the transfer of votes. Where three buses allegedly arrived at the district office of the Electoral Commission. Three buses. The buses were occupied by residents of Ashama, Tamale, and ABA Fusilis constituency. They arrived in Wolensi. Now, the people in Ashama, the people in Tamale, and the people in Zanribu, how did they meet to hide buses together, to board the buses together in a group? How? How did they meet? So clearly, there's a master hand, or if you like, a mastermind behind that exercise which occurred in Wolensi forward. So I make no apologies for my radical stance on this matter. But you see, the two exercises appear to be confirming a trend. And we should be frightened if we observe that trend. All the public opinion surveys I have seen, at least over the last five years, so just very strongly hmm, a decline in public confidence in the Electoral Commission. Public confidence in the Electoral Commission is dwindling and dwindling at a very fast rate. Shouldn't we be asking why? What is it that has happened in these two exercises who should frighten us, those of us who have noticed this dwindling in public confidence. What is it? Look, one of the things that have worried me 
over the last few years and so on, is the reckless statements made by commissioners on the Electoral Commission, absolutely reckless statements. Imagine a footballer, <coughs> a football game between Hearts and Kotoko. And the referee, just before the match, sings praises huh, of the goalkeeper of one team and, uh, and, uh, and the midfield and so on. I mean, where in the world, including Haiti and the Papa Doc, Will such a thing be allowed to pass? Where? Under Papa, even under Papa Doc, 18. This would not have been allowed to pass. Openly partisan. Openly partisan. And the other time, I raised the question. I said, if during the era of Professor Mills or John Mahama, they had appointed Dr. Tony Edu as an electoral commission, what would have happened? I was in the studio with an NPP communicator and said, oh, that's what Dr. Tony do. They know that he's an honest man. They will not object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where we have come. Even the NPP is undergoing some very severe changes. Because that, that communicator, if he had said that 10 years ago, they would have, he would have been dismissed from the party and been sanctioned for, for taking that position. You understand? But then we are coming to accept things as normal, abrasive things, things that undermine the constitutional order, things that are done in our faces, not behind us, and so on. A certain level of acceptance is creeping in, and that's even more frightening than the acts themselves. The NPP primaries in Yendi. I hope we haven't forgotten. Electoral Commission officer is standing the NPP primaries and they are singing the song, Eishi. And he takes the microphone and says, I would have liked to join you because I'm one of you. But the laws do not allow me to display my allegiance. What happened? And are signatures to the results. Afarijan's only duty was to declare results which had been affirmed by agents of the political parties. That's all. What system could be better than this system? Now, for some very strange reason, it has been decided to shut down the strong room. And I can imagine what could have happened in this country without the strong room. And I can't understand why that decision was made. I don't know why. I can't understand why that decision was made. But the decision has been made, and apparently the political parties have accepted it. Who am I? Who am I? You understand? Yes. The, the, the strong room has been closed. It's been abolished. The political parties have accepted it. And regional coalition centers are Exactly. And the last election, look at what happened at the regional coalition centers. So, I cannot believe what is happening. Now, this whole idea of armed people going to registration centers, going to polling stations, and so on, there's a reason why it's The Commission of Inquiry came out with this report. What happened? It was jettisoned. A substantial part of it was jettisoned. Nothing has happened. Those who fired and injured, those who abused the state security services and so on, are walking free. Nothing has happened to them. Perhaps nothing will happen to them. Why do you think that others would not do the same? If this is not a license for misbehavior, 
What else can be a license for misbehavior? At the end of the last elections, eight people were dead. Eight human beings were dead. Not cockroaches, not ants, not rabbits. Eight human Our own reluctance to stand up and speak promotes injustice and promotes impunity. So we are all the time pointing our fingers to the Flagstaff House, to Nana Dodanko Akufuado, to Kandapa, and so on. Let us remember that when you point your forefinger somewhere, the rest points to you. And we should begin to take responsibility for our action, for our condolence. Uh, is that how you say? You know, and so we should begin to take responsibility for that. And that is why I am happy that ordinary citizens, ordinary citizens, including the unemployed, including people who may never become ministers, who cannot even dream of becoming municipal chief executives, have taken on the struggle and have started the free courier campaign. That gives me hope. It gives me hope that if our big men would not speak, if our big men and women would allow themselves to be compromised, ordinary people would not. There's a problem, however. When there's a leadership failure and the masses have to take matters into their own hands, there's no telling where it would end. There's no telling the conduct of protest and its impact on society. And that is why it is important in our society for leaders to, were they part of their champion regime? They were not. Were they part of the Akufu regime? They were not. Politically innocent persons who suffered as a result of the failure of people like us to speak out, to stand for something. We, our inaction, our silence, led to all of those people suffering atrocities. Atrocities that we would not wish for anybody else. We should learn those important lessons and apply those lessons today in order to avert similar situations. But listen, if we fail to learn those lessons and apply those lessons today, what we don't want to happen will happen. And the consequences will be on all of our heads. We should learn those important lessons. Our failure to learn those important lessons huh, and apply the lessons we learn today has consequences for the country, but also has consequences for all of us, no matter our station in society. And we ought to be extremely careful. The case of Nakoyo is baffling. I mean, I spent a considerable part of last night watching television, watching the gathering at the Cantonment Police Station on. There's no indication that she can interfere with the investigations and so on. She is dumped into prison. Now, who are we talking about? We are not just talking about another parliamentary candidate of a political party, NDC or NPP and so on. We are talking about a young woman who has a three-year-old child. That's what we are talking about. A young woman who has a three-year-old child. Is this fact not important in considering the circumstances in which she finds herself and the circumstances in which she is placed? Have been committed where? At uh, Ufanko? Yeah. No, Bizo? Yeah, Kaswa. Is it Ufanko? No. Yeah, Kaswa Ufanko. OK, Kaswa Ufanko. Yeah. So if this is not an extraordinary case, why has the suspect been detained at Cantonment's police station. Yeah. 
Her mere detention at Cantonment's police station suggests that this is a very special case. We will otherwise. Why? There's a district police and so on. Why is this case being handled by headquarters? Now, my brother, I'm going to say something which I should not be saying. Two weeks ago, on this very program, I made what some have said is a passionate appeal to all the former heads, retired heads of the security services. You understand? All of them. And I mentioned them by name. I said, this is the time for them to speak up. If for nothing at all, <clears throat> to safeguard their lifelong work, lifelong work of building an enviable security service in Ghana. My friend, and he's my friend, everybody knows he's my friend, Kofi Buache. Excellent career in the police service. Al Hassan, who became IGP. Excellent career in the police service. Mr. Quanson, excellent career in the intelligence service and so on. Are they going to sit back and watch all the work that they did, devoted their life service to do? Why are they so quiet? Don't they see what is happening? Don't they know that what a Magadon does arrive, even if it's about certain examples, and any one of us can become an example. Let us handle these matters in such a way that we will protect our society and protect ourselves. That's not what I'm saying. Protect the society and protect ourselves. It is not all about altruism. It gets to a point where your own interest, the interest of your wife, the interest of your children, the interest of your extended family, the interest of your community should also matter to you 